ever. The same act has been criticized several times for not having sufficiently elaborated or fleshed out the provisions of Article 286 and 287 of the Constitution. In the course of the investigation of the Jimensa case, it was discovered that the Electoral Commissioner filed their assets after the complaint was lodged against them. Now, in the case of the ASEPA uh, versus the His Lordship, the Chief Justice, Justice Emi Yeboa of the Republic of Ghana, the Commission found in the course of investigation that the respondent had filed his assets and liabilities before the complaint was brought against him. Now, naturally, in both cases, the Commission was bound to give a decision that would accord with the ends of justice and to refuse the invitation to quote, disqualify them from office because this Commission had no power to do so. In some other cases, we have had to disqualify some persons from holding public office for a number of years because this Commission has power to do so. Now, despite this, the Commission has come under serious scrutiny and criticism for taking what some have described as, quote, mild decision against affected persons, especially high-profile personalities. There are some among whom are legal officers or legal practitioners who have described the Commission as the weakest link, quote, unquote, in the enforcement of the Code of Conduct under Chapter 24, without reference to the challenges of implementation posed by the law, and without, re without even reading the decisions that have been rendered in those cases. Now, distinguished participants, no one can deny the importance of a Code of Conduct for public officers in the fight against corruption. Indeed, allegations of non-compliance with Chapter 24 of the Constitution, especially conflict of interest and non-declaration of assets and liabilities, continue to bedevil the media space. And I think you all know what is happening. This year alone, the Commission received a record number of cases bordering on non-compliance and contravention of Chapter 24 of the Constitution, and we are currently investigating. Say, ladies and gentlemen, efforts to give practical effect to Chapter 24 of the Constitution has resulted in the introduction of the Conduct of Public Officers Bill, which we call the COPO Bill, which has been laid in Parliament three times between 2018 and 2020 would have been enacted into law and which is presently pending before cabinet for consideration. Now this is quite troubling. Our fear is that if action is not taken, the Copo Bill might suffer the same challenge that the Right to Information Bill faced before it was eventually passed into law. If we're going to fight corruption, this situation certainly is not desirable. The Commission and its partners therefore intend to use this year's International Anti-Corruption Day to build a broad coalition among public and private sectors, civil society, for a robust conduct of public officers' law that can effectively curb corruption and ensure that it is passed in law. Accordingly, we have chosen the theme Curbing Corruption in Ghana through a robust conduct of public officers' law. The objectives of this year's celebration is therefore twofold. One, create awareness of the UNCAC as the UN Convention Against Corruption and the provisions on the COPO bill 
conduct of public office bill as a means of addressing corruption in general and conflict of interest issues, illegal acquisition of wealth, and illicit enrichment in particular. Second objective is to mobilize state, private, civil society to facilitate the speedy passage of the Copper Bill into law. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's our hope that the 2022 Anti-Corruption Day would make critical contributions to the national effort at tackling issues of corruption and to provide the country an opportunity to do soul searching into public sector integrity as provided under the NACAP and to consolidate the gains made in reducing corruption in Ghana. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome all of you once again to this event and to request your cooperation and support as we celebrate this day. I thank you.